Hi, this is Arnie Crooms, Black Butte Forge again. Thanks for tuning in. Hey, today's project, I've got a, got a wood splitter wedge here. And uh, what the repair is going to be is to repair these broken ears. And I uh, want to take a little, little opportunity to kind of talk a little bit about welding. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of folks tune into YouTube to pick up welding skills which is great, and, and there's a lot of great videos out here on YouTube. Um, my background in welding is I started when I was a teenager, uh, 50 now, uh, had, a, had a pretty long career, uh, came full circle. I went to our local community college and helped rebuild their welding program. Over the course of a few years there, I helped uh, uh, about 80 kids get their welding certificate, uh, both boys, girls, all ages in the community. Uh, so when I taught, the key to getting somebody certified, in my opinion as a teacher, is you're, you're, you're there to help them become a better welder. And how I did that was teach them to identify their welding defects and then teach them what they do to make that welding defect. Okay? So... The first thing I want to point out on this one is when you look very closely at this, this broken ear, is you can tell that the ear has tore away from the wedge, okay? And there's a couple reasons why it did that. Uh, the number, number one culprit is going to be that I could tell by the burn mark here that it's pretty minimal. All this pain is still here. I could tell that the repair person did not preheat this large mass of steel that's that's going to be serve as a huge heat sink and suck all the heat okay it, it, it's not gonna it, well it, it's so big that it's not going to accept the heat from the weld all the heat is going to concentrate on the smaller piece this is going to get very hot and this is not going to get very hot so you need to preheat Okay, and then this way, the heat of the weld will take better to the larger mass. So that's the first problem they did. The other problem is, is rule number one when you're structural welding is you vertical up weld. Okay, you start at the bottom and you do your pattern and you work your way up. This welder started at the top and went down. What that, what happens there is you're going so fast that there is definitely no time for the arc to heat up this side and there's no time for the weld to penetrate into this side and all you do is just drag a puddle of molten metal down here downhill and it all sticks to the ear and it does not penetrate here okay so have the welder gone vertical up what they do start at the bottom and because this is the larger mass than that one, this had to be preheated. And a sufficient amount of time has to be held pausing on this side. Whip the rod over a little, pause. Whip across the toe, pause. Whip across the, the uh, you know, the center of the weld joint, I believe the throat. Whip across, back and forth, back and forth, and pause sufficiently on this side because this is the, the heavier mass. So if you follow that, that'll help you off the bat do a way better repair than this person did, okay? Preheat, vertical up weld. Next thing I wanted to show you is around the other side of this. Very good example, okay? This is something welders do. You see how pretty they ground that? Oh my goodness. So, you know, there's no such thing as a certified grinder, folks. This doesn't mean anything. What means anything is, did your work stick to here, okay? And clearly it did not. Literally ripped off the bottom. Again, no burn marks. See, all the paint is still here. They never took a cutting torch, at least a cutting torch, and preheated this zone right here. I would get a weed burner and just preheat this entire block of, of, of steel, okay? So... Uh, Another thing I'm skeptical of, I don't know for sure, I'm going to spark test this and I'm going to see if this is an alloy. I'm betting that it's not just mild steel. I'm betting it's got a few points of carbon and the sparks will show me that. 
And if that's the case, then the filler rod definitely needed to be an alloy rod such as 7018, okay, or, jeez, uh, you can go 8018, 11018, you can do all these crazy things, but I would recommend a low hydrogen welding rod for this because it is amongst the most structural rods we can use, okay, as a repair person. Uh, there it is. So this welding defect is mostly because... Number one, no preheat. Number two, the welder paused all of their time on the ear and not on here. And they went vertical downhill. So that's the problem there. All right. Uh, coming up on five, a little over. Uh, hope that that little bit of advice helps you become a better welder. Thanks for tuning in to Blackbeat Force today. Uh, appreciate all the new subscribers. You guys are awesome. And... Uh, Pass on the, uh, the tricks, the advice, share it with your buddies, hit like, and we'll see you next time at Black Butte Forge. Thanks for joining me. Bye now.